Hi everyone, welcome to another psdvault.com tutorial. In this video I'll show you how to create an eye-catching laser particle effect. We'll quickly get started here by creating a custom brush. Doesn't matter what color you make it of course, but as long as it's about three times as wide as it is high. And if you want more information on creating a new brush for yourself, check out our other videos. Let's go to our YouTube channel. So to begin we're going to create a new layer on our background here. We're going to use the custom brush we made just before. And we're going to apply these brush settings to it. The shape dynamics, the values you see there, as well as the scattering. So draw a random scattering of particles that you see there. And then we're going to transform that. So control T obviously and then we choose perspective by right clicking on it. Then you just drag the corners in to make it smaller and out to make it larger. So this optional step here, I'm just going to erase the leading edges of a couple of those particles that are closest to the viewer, as it were. Next I'm going to rotate the particles around like that and you can set it to be a specific number of degrees. I choose 45 degrees there. Now this is because we're going to duplicate the layer and then going to add a motion blur to the new layer. And you kind of want the motion blur to line up with the angle that those particles are making. Now because there's been a perspective warp applied to it, all the particles aren't exactly in line with each other but this is just a, a best fit basically. So I've lined it up mostly with the large central particles there, or the ones closest to the viewer. And don't forget to set the distance appropriate as well. And we can also set the opacity of that new layer down a bit. Okay, now the, for this particular effect I want to um, erase some of that motion blur from the distant parts. making sure to keep most of the blurring parts on the particles that are closest to the viewer. Okay, next step, we're going to create a new layer in preparation for adding some rendered cloud effects onto the particles. So we grab the lasso tool, set the feathering to be about 40 pixels, and we just draw around some of those particles in the distance there. The feathering makes it nice and smooth. Go up to the filter menu, down to render, and make sure we click on it properly, of course, and we choose clouds. And then we want to set the blend mode to screen there so it highlights the particles instead of masking them. And we're going to free transform that down to size. And 
once it's about the right size of the particles, then you just position it over it. And warp it, and resize it as you see fit. So now I'm going to duplicate those clouds a couple of times. And the same idea is to warp them, resize them, and position them appropriately on the particles. Okay, that's it as far as constructing the particle effect goes. Next step is just to colorize it. So what I've done is created a new layer on top of those ones that we've got there and set the blend mode to overlay. Then you just grab whatever color you want and paint over it. Again, just making sure it's overlay so it only colors the bits that are already there. And there's a couple more that I've made. Okay, the next step I want to do is to flatten the image in preparation for sharpening it. So filter, sharpen, smart sharpen. And the amount you sharpen here is up to you, obviously. Whatever looks good for the project you're working on. If you sharpen it a huge amount like that. You see those particles really stand out. A bit too much in this case, so I want to sh put it down to about 60 odd percent there. And that is pretty much it for this effort. So obviously you'd use those in your own projects to highlight things rather than uh, having just these particles unless you're making an abstract out of these particles purely. And here's the one we use in the tutorial on the website. Okay, thanks for watching. Have a good one. See you next time.